Well, today I've got a uh, steel MS661. Boy says that the uh, intake boot keeps popping off of it and it actually has a uh, place broke on the uh, clutch side of the uh, crankcase. And now he was nice enough to give me a cap too while I was out there talking to him. Um, so what we got here, which I'm gonna take and move you around and let you kind of see what we got. All right, so what's wrong is the part of the crankcase over here is broke right here to over here. And that is part of the handle right here. And what's happening is when he gets the, uh, the bar pinched, pulls and breaks this, and then uh, the intake boot comes off of the cylinder. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna attempt to fix this thing up, kind of like the uh, the '66, the yeah, the those '66 and the uh, '660, where it had a piece that went around that was bolted to the crankcase, where this where this little alignment pin will go. That's the idea, because it saves having to buy a crankcase half. So we'll see how that works out. And if it don't work out, then you get to look at it and, and laugh. So I guess we'll get to it and get it tore down to the point to where uh, we can get to it. And so we'll take the handlebar off and we'll take the, um, probably just take the carb out and take the boot completely off right now. Uh, let's start with by taking the handle off. I hope you can see that all right. So we're gonna take the handle off. We're gonna start there. In every project, you gotta start somewhere. So we'll just start with that. Just get it out of the way. Probably should take the air filter cover off just to put all the screws in. I'm actually using a uh, steel screen and it comes with a Torx. It's like a T25 Torx. It actually comes with it on there. I could probably speed it up a whole lot by using uh, the impact driver, but eh, why? This was already here and handy. So now we'll get to the other side. We'll get you picked up so you can see this. And what I'll probably do is I'll probably make up a washer, drill some holes, and <clears throat> may use a bushing. I don't work on steels very often. So we'll get you turned back down here and we'll see if we can't get this thing wrestled off.
You do a whole lot more with uh, McCullough's. sure if I don't have to take the uh, chain brake lever off to uh, get this thing to clear and roll over the front. But we'll do it anyway. But I don't usually work on steel, so. I don't know if I'm doing it right or wrong, but I'm sure somebody knows. So we'll just get this chain brake lever off. No, I don't want to come off, so. There's probably a real easy way to do this. And I'm just overly complicating things. <coughs> so we'll put all the fasteners up into the uh, air filter cover. <coughs> Yeah, I might have to take the chain brake cover uh, lever completely off. Uh, so we'll take the spark plug boot off. Get the wire out of the way. Well, I guess we'll just pull the spark plug too. The wrench does not fit in there. No, we don't have to. We can pull the whole top cover off. Yep, there's the intake boot. You can see, you can see where it's pulled out. Let's get you over here and look. Right here. She's pulled completely off again, just like he said. That's the piece right here that's broke. And I'm gonna try to remedy that without actually having to uh, buy a case half. So I'm not gonna have to pull the uh, the carver or anything. Just gotta get this boot back on. You know, any other time I'd probably put Moto Seal on here. And I may before it's over with moto seal this. Because it seems to yield so much better result by moto sealing. <clears throat> I 
Let's pull that dude off too. Yep, I actually think I can do something with that. Kind of the way it's sitting right now. But uh, let me sit back and think about this and I'll get right back with you. All right, so far what I come up with is a bushing that actually fits in there. So that's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use a bush in there and I'm gonna find me a piece of flat metal weld the bushing too and then find a place to uh, drill and tap to uh, attach that and I think that should fix the problem permanent we'll find out together cross your fingers guys okay I've decided to go ahead and uh, bump the camera now moto seal the boot right here so I can go ahead and get it sealed off. That way when I go to drilling here, I won't end up with uh, all the metal shavings in the cylinder. That's probably the smartest thing that I could think of. So we'll go ahead and moto seal and then put the boot on. And then we will, uh, after we get it sealed up, We, we will then go to drilling and I think I'm just going to drill right straight down into the house and, and drill a hole straight through the um, the bushing that I've got maybe this should take care of the problem of the boot popping off Which, according to him, is the only problem with this thing, is that boot likes to keep popping off. <clears throat> so we'll just seal the crap out of it. Get in there and get all the way around. Now, it'd probably make it a bear to get back apart again. But we'll worry about that when that day happens. Probably have to buy another intake boot at that point. I just want to seal up. That way, maybe it'll fix his problems. And I hope that's enough. So to get this intake boot back in, just gotta push the saw together. Come in with a screwdriver and just start prying on the boot. And it will, I mean, just right around the edge and it will pop on there. I done dry fitted it once and it did go. Pull the handle back around again. Make sure she's on all the way around.
and as soon as I get it on, it wants to pop back off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it back on off camera and get everything tightened down and show you what it looks like. All right, guys, I finally got this thing back on right there. That took a little work. I had to put both hands in there. But you can push it back in there. That's, that's not an issue. So what my idea now is to come in with this drill a hole directly through well let me get you back down here where you can see what i'm doing all right it's drill a hole straight through here and in through right here and just run a bolt through the bottom part of this so i'll, I'll drill a hole bigger on top and a smaller one on the bottom and drill here drill down and <clears throat> and tap probably tap the housing and the way i can run a small screw and it just sit right here right underneath the uh chain brake cover but i think that should work we'll find out let me get this all drilled up as you can see right here i've already got my hole drilled if i move my big fat finger but i'm gonna tap that with a tap and die set. And then I'm going to cut a bolt off that is short enough to fit inside the bushing and then also fit inside of, uh, well, it'll fit inside the bushing and won't bind with the uh, pin. And that should be enough to keep the thing from breaking. Steel, if you're watching, Make something a little different right here. That's a little thin to especially have something as far as a pressure point. But, uh, well, now I'm gonna attempt to get this thing uh, tapped out so I can get a, uh, a screw in it. We'll pop that spring off for the uh, chain brake. And this time I should be able to take the chain brake lever completely out. Well, I should have, but it's all right. It's not in the way, not now. <clears throat> so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap that hole, thread that hole and then come up with a uh, screw. I bought some the other day, so I should have plenty left over. And it may be a standard screw, but it's not going to make any difference in this particular application. Let me find my screws where I put that, uh, probably tap it for the same screws that I put into the, uh, the, the Poolin 3400. Let me find where I put them at. Well, as you can see, I've got this thing put in. I've got a hole right here to get to the screw. And there's a screw in there. And I had a little issue with getting the, <clears throat> the threads cut because the, the, I didn't have enough distance to actually get to the part where I had threads. So I actually ground a nut down and put a nut on the bottom side of this. And there's webbing on both sides of where that nut sets at. So it should be, in theory, the strongest part. But I will take and drag you over here and let you look and see what we got now. All right, so what we got now is we got this nut right here that's inside this webbing. And we got this bolt in here that I rounded the head on and slotted for a slotted screwdriver, just like this right here. And you can kind of see the slot in there, but that's what I end up doing. Next step now is to put this uh, spring back on for the chain brake and hope that it fits, that I didn't take too much room up. 
we will find out. Let me pop this thing back on. And it looks like I'm gonna have to do a little grinding on this nut to make this nut to where it'll, to where this dude will fit in there. <clears throat> so I guess we'll do a little grinding. We'll grind on the nut just a little bit. Looks like the intake boot's still on there, so we're good on that. So I'll take my grinder, my Dremel, and uh, just do just a hair bit of grinding on this nut. That way I can get this spring in. And I will probably use one of these double cut burrs. It'd probably be this one right here. That'll probably be the burr that I end up using. And just run it right in here, right on the edge of the nut. Just enough to let me have enough room to get in to put the spring in. So we'll change the tool and then the rim on. Which I have no idea where I put my wrench at, so I'm just going to use pliers. This thing spun around so you can see what I'm doing. Maybe you can see it. Uh, probably not. I'm going to go in right here to where this nut is. And give myself just enough clearance to get that spring in. and we'll take a spring and we'll test fit and if it slips right over there then that's and then we're good so we'll we'll test fit the spring and it does it fits right over there so we're good we're good on that it fits right over that nut i mean not right below that nut so i've shaved enough off of it but now's the, the hard part where you got to do all the pulling and stretching. And I'm just gonna use a screwdriver and hope it goes on without smacking me in the face or something, cause that would be, uh, well, it'd be funny to you, but it'd be not so funny to me. So we're just gonna take this dude and squeeze her on here. I've done brake springs like this for years with just a screwdriver. And I hope this thing stays on there and rides. Just like that. Check a chain brake lever. And it works. So we're good on that. Guess we'll put this dude back together now. So we'll put the uh, the cover for the oil pump back on. Which is right here, we'll put it back on. Well, it ain't the oil pump, but it's a chain brake cover. We'll put it back on. Real easy. And then we'll come over here to the air, air cleaner. Find the little screws that go in it. That's 
and they should be a, a machine thread. But we'll get them, we'll put them in. I do like though, however, it seems to be all the fasteners are the same size torques on this thing, which does tickle me to death. It does make things just a hair bit simpler than having to swap tooling every time you go to something else. I just think there's a better way to fix that little issue there. And I hope this is the way to fix it. So boy said it probably didn't have uh, a week worth of run time on it when he broke it. And he said it's the second time he's done that. And I'm not going to get into who the dealership is or who he bought it from, but they have attempted to fix this thing. He said a handful of times and all they do is put the intake boot back on and send it back to him and tell him there's nothing wrong with it. So he has quite a bit of repair bill in it. So now uh, we will put the handlebar back together. So now we'll get this down here all situate, resituated. I gotta pry this up enough to get the uh, the plastic tubes to start into the handle. Just like it. Then I get a couple of these screws and we'll run them dudes in there. always always try to put the threads in the same spot the old threads were in that way you're not cutting new threads and making things so much harder than what it has to be because uh, all they'll do from that point on is just strip out so always try to go through the same threads that you run through the first time and there goes everything i just lost my Intake, I mean, my air filter cover, the screws, the whole works. I just lost it all that quick. We'll take this right here and we'll put this dude back on here. Pick up all these screws. And I think it's the right screw for that. I don't know. It's probably not. This looks more like it. Take it, run it up into the handle. It's 
So that dude's in there tight now. And we'll take this, this little plastic piece here, pop it back on. Put the other two screws here in. Like I said, don't try to cut new threads, try to use the old ones. Then we'll tighten this bottom one up. Just making sure that the boot's still on, and it is. So next we're gonna put this one, that's where that screw went. We'll put it back in. We'll put the uh, bar guide back on. First, I'm gonna wipe out behind it. Then I'll put the bar guide back on. I don't have the outer guide with me. I don't. I didn't bring it. And I think it's actually on the cover. And I don't have the clutch cover. He still got it. So. Now we're gonna just gonna take put this little screw in, which easily enough takes the same like T25, which is great. So there's all that. Looks good. Now we'll put this shroud back on. Oh shoot, I gotta past the decomp button until it's dead, dead square center of the top. I've got to pass it. Decomp Barton works just fine. We'll put that dude down there on the choke. I don't know that it's gonna make any difference, but we'll put it down on choke. And 
We'll finish it off with the rest of the cover. And that should be it. He should be in good shape because it shouldn't move much now. That stiffened her up a bunch. But I will pull this off, make sure I did not pull the boot loose. I'll look down through there and Let's see if I can see it. No, boot is still on. We'll let that uh, moto seal have time to cure. But there you go. That you fix for your side cover as of right uh, your crankcase half as of right now unless i come up with something else that will work better we'll just see we'll have to find out